folks, going into this Women's World Cup, no team had ever bowed out a tournament before the knockout stages whenever they have hosted the Women's World Cup. However, we saw New Zealand go out yesterday getting third place in Group A, and now their fellow co-host, Australia, is on the brink of also being eliminated. They need three points today against Canada to keep their tournament hopes alive and possibly maybe get the first seed in Group B. On the other side, you have Ireland against Nigeria with the Nigerians, the Super Falcons, up first in the group against the eliminated Irish. Could be an interesting one to see. Who gets on to the knockout stage? You've got three teams, Canada, Australia, and Nigeria. Two of them are on. One of them, their season ends tonight. Hello, everyone. I'm Mihirson Hassan, and thanks for tuning in on what is an early Monday morning for me here in Phoenix. Glad that you could tune in on what is a Monday night over in Australia. Melbourne, our setting of Canada versus Australia in the rectangular stadium. And Lang Park in Brisbane, which will be home to Ireland versus Nigeria. We've got Canada, Australia on the left, Ireland, Nigeria on the right. Let's go to the starting lineups, and we will start off with Ireland versus Nigeria. Starting off with the Irish, they're going to a 3-4-2-1 tonight with a couple of changes. Going from a 3-4-3, which was seen last time against Canada. Courtney Brosnan in goal. Megan Connolly, Louise Quinn, and Neve Faye across the back. Katie McCabe, Rusha Littlejohn, Denise O'Sullivan, and Lily Ag across the midfield. Sinead Farrelly and Heather Payne as your two attacking midfielders. And Kyra Carusa up top. Payne and Ag will be your new players. For Nigeria, in a 4-2-3-1, similar to what they've posted against Australia, Chiamaka Anandosie in goal. Your defenders across the back, Ashley Plumtree, Blessing Demahin, Osinache Ohale, and Michelle Alozier. Holding midfielders will be Halimato Ayinde and Christy Uchebe. Attacking midfielders, Uchena Kanu, Antoinette Payne, and Rashidat Achbade. Up top, Asisat Oshola. On to Canada and Australia as teams start to break the huddle in both. We'll go to Canada's roster of 4 2 3 1. Only change is Christine Sinclair back up top. The rest of that lineup, you've got Kaylin Sheridan in goal, Ashley Lawrence, Vanessa Gill, Kadisha Buchanan, and Jade Riviere across the back. Julia Grasso and Quinn will be in the midfield. Jordan Heitema, Jesse Fleming, and Adriana Leon in the attacking midfield. For Australia, a 4-4-2, the same as they posted in that loss to Nigeria. Mackenzie Arnold in goal, Steph Catley, Alana Kennedy, Claire Hunt, and Ellie Carpenter. Across the back, Emily Van Eggman, Kyra Cooney Cross, Katrina Gori, Haley Rasso across the midfield, Caitlin Ford, and Mary Fowler up top. And we are underway in both games in Canada, Australia. The Matildas will be in their turquoise outfits, all turquoise outfits in that regards. Going from right to left, Canada in the red tops, black shorts, and red socks. Going from left to right, Ireland and Nigeria, we've got Ireland in the white tops, white shorts, white socks, going from left to right. Nigeria in their all dark green, going from right to left. I'm going to try to see if we can refresh. Beat is not working that well. We're going to try our best here to try to call both matches. If not, oh well. I might have to pull up one on my phone. All right. So back with Ireland and Nigeria. That one's still going. Canada, Australia. We'll have to pick the lead. Like I said, I might have to put one on my phone just in case one of those two streams comes out during the time. If it happens, that's all right. There's a long ball sent forward here for Ireland. That's going to be collected by an Andosier. Target there was Heather Payne there on the end. First led by Vera Paul. And from Netherlands, has done a lot of great work for a home country, but now getting a chance to rep at the, the big level. Spent a lot of time at the international level in Scotland, approaching for her home country, Netherlands. 
and then Stim Russia, and then down to South Africa. Because we're two and a half minutes in, came to Australia, one and a half minutes in with Ireland and Nigeria. The other coach for Nigeria, Randy Waldrum from the United States. This is his second stint coaching at an international level. Coach Trinidad and Tobago, 2014 to 2016, when he was also coaching in the NWSL. I should also mention, too, with Waldrum, a lot of his stints have come with his fellow college soccer teammates. Nonetheless, ball sent into the box, and that one is caught there by Courtney Brosnan of Ireland. The ball, the delivery of that is from Antoinette Payne. Meanwhile, it's back to base for Australia. Mackenzie Arnold getting some of her first touches of the match. Ball again, back and forth, back and forth it goes. As the ball is played forward, maybe a chance here for Caitlin Ford to break, or rather Fowler. It was played back by Buchanan. Australia needs three points to advance today. I forgot to mention this at the top of the show, but here's what the group looks like. Nigeria at the top with four points. Canada in second with four as well. Both of them have a plus one goal differential, but Nigeria in the first place spot because they have three compared to Canada's two. Australia is third with three points. Ireland is fourth with zero. Throughout the night, we'll be keeping track on what changes, how much it changes as well. Long ball sent forward. Out down by Asisat Oshola. And chested down there by Ireland's tell, Lily Ag. And just a rather interesting clearance there by Brosnan. Thrown for Nigeria deep in the attacking third. Thrown out for Canada. Taken by Jade Riviere. Headed up by Sinclair. Still in some area. And then cleared out. Maybe a chance for the Australians to counterattack here. Canada bringing some numbers back. Australia bringing some numbers forward. Overlapping run in the middle. Now it's a cut in. Out of cut. Just caught up in the middle. So many chances. Nonetheless, back with Nigeria now. Antoinette with the ball in and just skips past everybody. Another goal kick for the Irish. That one deflected off of Ford. And with that, we got Australia's first throw in. Fifth minute in Melbourne, fourth minute in Brisbane. Steph Catley with the throw in down the line. Picked off there by Adriana Leon. And knocked back by Sinclair. Was deflected, though. So. Will, or rather, sorry, it was not deflected. So it will be an Australia goal kick. And this is the second doubleheader of the day. First was in Group C. There was one match between the top two teams, Japan and Spain, who had already clinched their ticket, but were deciding seeding. Japan won 4-0 in that matchup. And then on the other side, you had Costa Rica and Zambia. Zambia picked up a resounding victory 3-1 over Costa Rica. Ball played in for Ireland now. Chance laid off. A shot goes in and it just goes wide. First real chance of the day. And Katie McCabe, the captain, who scored from an Olympic goal against Canada, so close to making it 1-0. A great buildup, too, by the Irish. A great turn laid off there by Farrelly. But in the end, about from edge of the box, too. McCabe took it first time and just trickled wide, much to her, her dismay. Candle with the clearance four. That's chested down by Claire Hunt. And here comes Canada, maybe, on the break. Jordan Haitema was playing number nine in their match against Nigeria, playing left mid. Haitema into the box. Couldn't find Leon as that's cleared away. Buchanan, Quinn, and to the back line it goes. Back line for Canada, back line for Ireland, both listed as the home teams for today's match. Even with Australia technically being the host of this tournament, that is for Canada and Australia. Ball back to base. Pressure coming as it just has to be cleared by Brosnan. Plumtree. But Oshola, who's playing back. Part of me, too, couldn't tell. Ball caught. Seven minutes in. No goals yet between either side as that one's pipped out. 
unable to find Ajbade there on the wing for Nigeria. Throw in for Ireland. That one headed out by Jade Riviere. Throw in for Australia. Again, midfield type play. Few chances on both sides. Katie McCabe for Ireland. Not much in Canada, Australia. No shots, period. So Leon was trying to see this out, and she did get the last touch before it went out on the end line. Corner kick coming up for Australia. Back with Ireland, Nigeria. Ball pipped forward. Up for McCabe. She took the last touch before it was deflected. So thrown back for the Irish. McCabe again. Motoring four. That's knocked off. Maybe a chance for the Nigerians to break. Nope. Given right back with McCabe and crew. Meanwhile, the ref in Canada, Australia, just making sure that everything is set. Corner to be swung in by Cooney Cross from the left-hand side. In swinger towards the back post. Headed up there. Not the best one by Kennedy. Sent back into the middle. That one's headed down. Chested up and cleared by Sinclair. Ball played all the way back towards goal for Australia. Back with Mackenzie Arnold. Ireland now trying to get back in towards the edge, and that one falls towards Ohale. Maybe back with Australia again. Out on the wing, Catley into the middle. It's still bouncing in the area. Settle there, a shot, and it's in the net. Goal for Australia. Haley Russo, but it's offside. That would have been a great goal, but... And Haley Russo had some space, too. A lot of space in the middle for Australia's team. And I think they're going to call offside in the build-up to it. Meanwhile, Cross deflected out on the end line for a corner kick. They're going to call Steph Catley off, I think, on the initial run as it went towards Rasso on the right-hand side, or rather in the box, closer to the right-hand side. Stephanie Frappard, who's the ref today, just making sure everything's okay. I'm just trying to verify the no goal, and I believe it will be no goal, but that would have been something for... For Australia, I think they are still looking over it to see if it's offside. Meanwhile, corner kick in Ireland, Nigeria. Oh, she's reneged it. And Australia is up on Canada. Meanwhile, Ireland sent into the box. That's punched up by Anand Dozier. Brought down for the chance and by McCabe, nonetheless cleared away. What a big development in Australia, especially in Melbourne. The Matildas up 1-0 on Canada. Clarified here at 3.11 a.m. As it stands, this is how it stands. This is how it lines up. Australia in first with six points. Nigeria in second. Canada would be out. And Ireland, of course, would be in fourth. Well, that's a big development. Cat Lee with the ball swung in. And so just a good, resounding present there by Rasso. Kama's day right in the corner. Just right past Sheridan as well. But what a chance. What a finish there for Haley Rasso of the Matildas. 74th cap, 13th goal. For the, for the side. Got to see when they called the goal. Well, they, they gave the... The check was complete in the 10th minute. They're going to call it in the 9th minute of play. For Australia to break the deadlock on Canada. Meanwhile, Ireland... Still 0-0. Again, they're playing for pride. They lost the first two. They're officially eliminated. But at the same time, for a team that's making their debut, what a result it would be to get something against Nigeria. So now Canada, as I mentioned before, before all the developments, as it would stand right now, Australia's in first with six points. Nigeria's second with five. Canada in third with fourth. And Ireland last. So Canada would be out. Again, these are two teams that historically have made the knockouts. Australia's made it to the next stage in the, the past four tournaments. Canada has made it to the round of 16 in 2019. Quarterfinals in 2015, trying to make it a third consecutive this year. And, of course, in 2003, 
they ended up being the fourth place team. Meanwhile, Australia back in the middle, a chance again, and this time it's saved by Sheridan. Russell was looking for the double. You could tell the entire stand was ready to explode. Oh, man. Haley Rasso with so many chances. So as it stands, 13th minute, nil-nil between Ireland and Nigeria. 1-0, Australia finds himself up on Canada. So now the question becomes, as Anandosia has got the ball, pressured but able to get it out. The question becomes for Nigeria, do you want to go get a goal here? Because as it stands, Australia gets first. I bring that up because most likely whoever gets the first place spot is going to face the runner-up from Group D. That is Denmark or China. If you get the runner-up spot in this group, though, you end up playing England, the 2022 Women's Euro Champions. And that's the that's the interesting that's the interesting question. That's the interesting interesting question that one must ask themselves is do you get that goal? Meanwhile, Canada just has to get a result to stay alive. Back with Haitama, edge of the box, back with Lawrence. She'll circle around, pip towards it, was blocked away. Nonetheless, chested down. Grosso sends it in, and that's headed out there by Catley. Nonetheless, long ball sent forward, and that one is caught by Arnold. A chance here. It's picked off here by Nigeria. Maybe this could be an interesting development. In towards Oshola, in a clear shot, just wide. Trying to pull the magic she did against Australia, getting the game winner. This time, just teared wide. Asi South Oshola, the Barcelona striker, so close. As I just mentioned, I mean, if you're Nigeria, you want to get that first seed spot so close to putting themselves in a position right there. Still nil-nil between Ireland and Nigeria. Meanwhile, it was um, Alana Kennedy, the clearance, going for Canada. Once again, the deep in the attacking third. Again, as I mentioned before, Australia can't do much when it comes to getting a first seed spot. The only way they get a first seed is if Nigeria doesn't pick up full points against Ireland. However, that's pretty much it. At the same time, you might want to assert dominance, right? You want to assert dominance that you can be a team that can go the distance. How about Japan earlier today? Beat Spain. Spain, mind you, 4-0. And then even like for a team like Ireland too, Costa Rica, Zambia between the two eliminated sides, Zambia. Got their first Women's World Cup victory, winning at 3-1. to one. Sheridan with the boot forward. Callie's going to head it down. That one's picked up by Fleming as she tries to go forward. Now with Leon. Leon now on the right. What can she do? In the mix. Edge of the box now heading back inside. Leon crossing back post a little too far for Haitama, who was trying to get ahead to it. But nonetheless, so many chances. And they're going to show the, they were showing the replay right now of how Catley was offside in the buildup to the Rasso goal. And it looked like it might have been Vanessa Gill, the center back, that kept her on side. 17th minute in Melbourne, 16th minute in Brisbane. Canada down 1 0 against Australia. Ireland and Nigeria tied up 0 0. Now with Oshola off the turn. That's one's cut away there. That one picked off by Connolly. Connolly on the receiving end of an own goal against Canada, which essentially tied the match up before Adriana Leon, who was playing today on the right hand side for the Maple Leafs, made it two to one. Clipped in a little too far as that's headed out by Quinn. Cut out, cut in, cleared away. Long ball, long clearance by the Aussies. Seventeenth minute. Now looks like Alozier is down on the pitch. So 
Still not much. So let's take a look at this collision. Is Alozi down? Connolly was the one that kind of body checked her. No foul was given though. But it looks like Nigeria with once again another attacking option. Lozier able to get up on her feet. She'll be the one doing the, the honors with the throw in there. So all eyes on Canada, Australia. As I mentioned before, Australia now in the lead for Group B after coming in third. If it stands the way it is right now, Canada would be the one team heading back home. It's Lawrence. Dribbling down, Allende up the pitch, playing towards Oshola. Can she get there on the end line? Able to keep it in. Oshola again dancing. Was challenging against Connolly, but did not get the final deflection. That's going to be a goal kick for the Irish. Back with Kadisha Buchanan of Canada. How does Canada respond in a situation like this? You knew Australia was going to come in with fire and power, right? Especially after some disappointing results early in the tournament. As Leon gives it off towards Fleming. Fleming with the ball played in and still in the box. Hard of it, too. And it's cleared away there by Kennedy. So many chances. Again, and Haitama has just been lurking on that left-hand side. Might be a blessing in disguise that Canada has put her in that situation. Because earlier in the tournament, they were almost doing like a stack between her and Christine Sinclair, where Sinclair was playing an attacking midfielder position and Haitama was playing up top. Ball played through a little too far for running Rasso. Right now, her goal is all the difference at Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. That stands, her goal is the reason why Australia stays in this tournament and wins Group B. So now it depends. If you're Nigeria, you can get a goal, which would put yourself back in the driver's seat. Or it could be down. Nonetheless, chance maybe for Ireland. So that's one's cut out. You also have to understand this, too, is that if Nigeria and Canada both lose, Nigeria's got the goal differential. But if it turns into an idea that Canada can get goals forward, then it goes down to head-to-head. -head. Both those teams had a scoreless draw to start off the tournament. After that, it comes down to disciplinary tactics. And Canada's got a less amount of yellow cards. It's based off a disciplinary system, actually. So, of course, if you look at yellow cards, Nigeria has less yellow cards. They've got three, Canada has four. But they also have a direct red card, which actually was the case in that match against Canada. So at the same time, you could see a change down the way where you could see Canada actually make the knockouts over Nigeria. As it stands right now, Nigeria is still making it, even if Ireland were to get that first goal and put the Super Falcons in a hole. Nonetheless, 20 minutes through in both Melbourne and Brisbane. Australia up 1-0, courtesy of Haley Rasso. Ireland and Nigeria tied up 0-0. Free kicks in the attacking third in both places. We'll start off with Ireland first. Connolly to take the in-swinger into the box. Caught there, oh, for a little while by Anandosier. And just bounced there before Fairley could do any damage with it. With Canada now. This one sent back post. Haitama couldn't get it on target. No deflection out, and that's going to be a goal kick. So still so much to be played for here, though. I mean, at the same time, you could have Australia kind of edge out the difference. You could have Ireland and Nigeria kind of fighting for stuff. Could be interesting what ends up happening. Goal kick in Canada, Australia, as sent forward by Mackenzie Arnold. Chance for Nigeria now. Fine for the ball. Ajbade lost it again on the left hand side. Possession has been more in case of Canada. 59%, 22 or 24% rather, in favor of Australia. So not the most. Meanwhile, chance here for Ireland. Dashing forward a pace. Ball played through. This could be dangerous. A shot tried to go, or rather not a shot, but 
a redirection back into the middle. Denise O'Sullivan was the one motoring forward, and Cara Carusa unable to find a chance to it. Going out by Sinclair. Did get a final deflection, so it's back with Canada for a throw-in, and this is probably going to be the narrative here in Melbourne is, does Australia hold on? Does Canada get to it? You also have to know, too, that a win would, I mean, that's, they've got to do some other things if Nigeria wins it, but if the score stands the way it is, if Canada comes back to win, they get the first seed, which in other words means they don't have to play England in the knockout stage. I'm kind of penciling in England at the number one spot again. We've seen crazier things in this Women's World Cup. I wasn't expecting Japan to beat Spain 4-0. So, again, things like this occur. But we're about halfway through the first half in both matches. In other words, quarter of the way through, Australia up 1-0 on Canada. Ireland and Nigeria tied 0-0 right now. I'm here, some Hassan. Thanks for tuning in on what is a Monday night in Australia, Melbourne, and Brisbane, the sites of your two matches. Early morning here in Phoenix at about 3.24, but 13 minutes ago, 3.11 a.m., it was officially given that Australia has now taken the lead in the group in first place, and Canada has fallen to third. So in other words, it would be the team from North America in this group that will be on their way out. So back with goal with Sheridan for Canada. Back in the back line for Ireland. Spread across the back. Nee Fahey, Louise Quinn. Back with Megan Connolly. Chance again. That's when it's picked off in the middle. Set piece coming up for Canada. Christine, or pardon me, Jesse Fleming to take it from the corner. Good representation of Canadian fans in what is in majority Australian environment. Without a doubt, it's going to be mostly Australia. On the far side of the pitch, corner kick coming up for Canada. Fleming with a low ball in, and that's easily cleared off from the first player there. Lawrence with a rough first touch, but able to see this out with the touch line. Able to try to cut that back in. Not much, so she just plays it back towards her fellow center back, or rather her fellow back line player, Jade Riviere. Back with Sheridan and goal. Long ball sent a little too long there by Sheridan. Looking towards Leon on the right. Look at Tony Gustafson, the head coach of Australia, giving some instructions to his players. He told media earlier this week that if Australia fails to qualify for the knockouts, it would go down as a failure. Meanwhile, chance for Ireland sent in. Long shot and not the best shot for a sliding, Kento Fairley, a sliding Fairley, who was trying to get contact. He had a good combo there, as was Heather Payne getting on the right-hand side. With two attacking midfielders unable to connect there for Ireland. So Australia's up 1-0, and not to mention, by the way, Sam Kerr. Probably the darling of Australia, the darling of this 2023 Women's World Cup. On the bench to start off, of course, suffered a calf injury in practice, so she was out for the first two matches. She'd be making her first appearance tonight. Meanwhile, Nigeria in the attacking third. Long ball sent in. And it was a little too high, a little out of play for Uchenna Kanu, who was the target. Ajbade there with the poor service. Another goal kick for Arnold in Canada, Australia. Again, only one goal so far. Australia up 1 0 on Canada. Ireland and Nigeria is still 0-0, but at the same time, you still have to consider what a goal would do for Nigeria. Ireland is playing for pride. They can play. They can get a win. They can bring that back to their home country in their debut. But, as I mentioned before, 
Nigeria with the win would take the first seed. Meanwhile, that one is caught there by Sheridan. Another combo that could have been deadly for Australia it was G or Caitlin Ford. Very close. 28th minute in Melbourne, 27th minute in Brisbane. Australia still up 1-0, but again, with so many good counterattacking intuitives as well. And maybe that's the, the interesting dynamic of that match, really, is, you know, Canada can win it with a win, maybe with a little luck from Ireland, Nigeria, or just scoring more goals in general. They could get the first seed. They decide to play a little bit more open. Australia comes back. They control more momentum. They control more pace. And they get a goal. And now, basically, Australia is just sitting back. So now the question becomes, does Canada get that equalizer? Or does Australia hold on to win it? Not to mention, as I mentioned before, Sam Kerr still on the bench. And I mean, that was the big, the big kicker. I mean, Kerr was... Active enough to play, according to a lot of players and head coaches. But other than that, it's been a little wishy-washy, if you will. Let's get all these windows straightened out. There we go. Another... Um, another free kick coming up for Canada. Another in the attacking third, and more towards midfield this time, as Ireland find themselves again in the break. Meanwhile, ball swung in for the Canadians. Buchanan was in the middle. Haitama could not see it, rather get a touch on it, but it's not going to matter. It's going to be a corner kick for the Canadians. Meanwhile, Ireland-Nigeria trying to see this one out. At the same time, we're going to have Jesse Fleming from the right side of the pitch, in other words, the near side for the Canadians. They need a goal to equalize. They need to equalize to advance. Simple as that. 30th minute from Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. A sold-out Melbourne Rectangular Stadium in that regards. Meanwhile, Fleming into the box, flicked on back post. Nobody touched it. We run my Leon. They're calling for a handball, and that's cleared away. Let's see if Stephanie Frappar will look at that. Lawrence with a pip, and Leon was offside, so she decided not to grab it. But a goal kick and nervy moments here. Let's take a look. I think that might have been a handball. Initial flick from Grosso, and there's possibly some talk on Ellie Carpenter maybe being called for a handball again it was an interesting deflection from the angles we saw i don't think there was enough to officially say it was and even if it touched her arm her arm was close to her body so in other words it was in a rather natural position instead of unnatural again their their rules for handball are much more relaxed compared to what's seen maybe in a lot of men's club sports where usually it's like if the ball touches the hand period it's a penalty kick. In this tournament, it's if it has to be unnatural. It cannot be simply the touch of the arm or the hand. Knocked out there by Riviere. With 30 minutes through in both matches now. Meet up in the middle. The one taken out there by Uchebe. Uchebe double team. Still able to keep the ball, though. Kudos to her. A split pass out to Oshola. Not the best first touch as it's cut out there by Little John. Ireland with only one goal in this entire tournament came from the corner kick spot against Canada. Katie McCabe, the captain, to do it. There's Rivier. Rivier cutting inside. Another layoff. This one towards. It was number 14, they listed. It was Gio, probably. Yeah, it was Gio. Ball played through. Ford gives chase. Played back by Riviere and booted forward by Sheridan. Back. 
back with Quinn and Buchanan. And now towards Gio in the back line again for Canada. Nigeria in the back line tries to pivot forward, and Ireland's back line will pivot back towards them. Long ball sent a little too long as it goes all the way back towards Brosnan in goal. Canada, meanwhile, a long ball sent in their favor. Can't find Haitama. Fleming was giving chase, but able to cut it out there. Good work. I believe I Cooney Cross was the one doing so. Here's Lawrence. Lawrence in some space. Ireland also with a chance that's knocked away. Still 1-0 in favor of Australia. Still 0-0 between Ireland and Nigeria. Maybe a chance here. Edge of the box. Laid off to the middle. That one's cleared away. Now still in the area. It's Rasso in the end. Rasso with a shot deflected. Rebound is right towards goal. A shot is in. And it's a goal. A second one for Australia. They are jumping in the box. 34th minute. And it's 2-0 in favor of the Matildas. They can breathe a sigh of relief. For Canada on the other side, one of their players is down. Let's take a look at this buildup. Because it was first brought up Mary Fowler. Played outside. Rasso, there was the shot. And now they're checking if Ellie Carpenter was in the middle, was offside. She was, wasn't able to get a touch, but Fowler slammed it on the rebound. And it's just the type of contact Australia needed. Up 2-0 against Canada here, 35th minute. I think this team stepped up. A lot of the players said that with Sam Kerr coming back, playing active, they said this was going to be a game. You, you can tell in the lineup that this team can play better. Uh, they can breathe a sigh of relief. And I think you can tell from the way Australia has played on the counter majority of the time, but able to get contact. It's been that kind of day. Meanwhile, Kanu and Nigeria down Zero, zero, or rather, not down, but still tied. Meanwhile, the Canadian player that was dealing with the injury, I believe it might be Kadisha Buchanan from what we've seen. And don't quote me on that, but it looks like it might be Buchanan. But 33rd minute of play, so 34th, so if you will, about 3.34 a.m. we'll call it here in Phoenix. Australia now taking a two-goal lead. And they now have a plus two goal differential. Again, for Australia, the only way they would get that first seed is if Nigeria does not pick up full points. That's it. That's it. If Nigeria picks up three points, the Super Falcons are your first seed and Australia's second. Now, Stephanie Frappar is now checking again, this time to see if the goal will count rather than a no goal count. Hansen. Would be an interesting development for the Matildas. Mary Fowler was the one that tapped it in. She was onside, but the question becomes is in the build-up to it, with Rasso shot, with Carpenter in the middle, was Ellie Carpenter offside? Oh, wow, Buchanan still getting treatment. Frappar is going to head to the monitor to check this. So hold on to your horses in Melbourne. Australia could still be within reach from the Canadians. But as it looks like right now, Australia is on their own campaign of their own. I think, well, that's one thing. And now I think the other question is, was Carpenter tripping Buchanan? Because Buchanan was trying to play the ball in that situation. Essentially, Carpenter crossed it out. Meanwhile, chance here for Ireland. Edge of the box. Cut out. Out the edge. McCabe sending it back in. Back post, headed up again, once and twice caught there by Anandosier. There's so many different questions that could be given. Frappar, out of the VAR booth. What is her verdict? And they're going to... No goal. No goal in Australia and Canada. So the Canadians are still within reach. 
to equalize on the Aussies. They're going to call Ellie Carpenter offside here, which is an interesting move because it was at around the same fraction, maybe a little bigger, but around the same fraction where Steph Catley, although Catley was found onside, this time Carpenter, I believe, stuck out her leg. Now, the question is, did she get a touch to it? She didn't, in my opinion. I, I don't like that move from Australia. I don't like that move from the refs either because – that puts them in a position where it's a little interesting. Nonetheless, Matildas keep on attacking back with Catley on the left. Caitlin Ford, tempting Rivian Leon. Able to keep it on the left. Still dancing, still playing around with the ball. Clipped up and chested down there by Giel. Cleared away. Two notes. Buchanan got some treatment. She was on the touchline. Now she's back in. So Canada's back to playing with, with a full 11. The 38th minute between Ireland and Nigeria. That match is still scoreless. 39th minute between Canada and Australia. Back with Catley. Dancing in the middle. That's cleared out by Quinn and Buchanan. Another corner kick. And you can tell maybe the energy is going back and Favor of Australia, despite not getting their second goal, if they can get a second, that would be really interesting. And it would almost nullify Canada's chance of getting that first seed. Cooney crossed from the left-hand side, crossed in, punched away by Sheridan, in the area, and now it's in! And it's Resso again! She's got a brace, her 14th for her country, 39th minute, and now you can say Australia is up 2-0. Oh, what a bounce. What a shot. And again, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sheridan was just caught up in a position where she just couldn't play back. Let's take a look at that because I think Canada might have misdone themselves on this. Yeah, it was a missed punch there by Sheridan. And Quinn, on their knees right now, just unable to clear it. And it fell right towards Rasso. Haley Rasso, at this point, if Australia makes a run in this Women's World Cup, she may never have to buy a drink in the country ever again. Two goals that puts them not only now with, within reach, but in a big, big moment. 39th minute, so 3.40 a.m. here in Phoenix. And the Aussies still up, now with some insurance as well, with a plus two goal differential. Nigeria, again, it still remains true that Nigeria is, is still in a position where they are not they are not in number one. Now, don't get me wrong, they're still in a position where they can do some stuff, but not that much. And Canada, more importantly, is now a negative one goal differential. So even in the, in the event that Nigeria does lose, Canada finds himself down so much that they're going to have to get a goal back to, at the very least, compete with Nigeria, maybe a little more at this rate. Well, actually, when you think about it, if it's 1-0. Meanwhile, Canada might have heard my call. Is it Sinclair? Now with Quinn. 40 minutes through in both venues. Lang Park, the home of Ireland and Nigeria. Melbourne Rectangular, the home of Canada and Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. Headed away. Would be interesting if Australia were to make it three. Long ball sent and a little too far for Rasso, who's playing heroine for the entire country. Nonetheless, ball sent in, and Dozier missed on the ball. Nonetheless, not no options for the Irish to tap that in. Cleared away by Kanu. The Irish keep on attacking. Now in the middle, edge of the box, now inside of it, laid off to the middle. And a lost ball there. Denise O'Sullivan, so close to touching it, just couldn't get it on. But Ireland, I mean, from what we've seen in, in that match, Ireland has looked like the better team over Nigeria. So you never know what to expect. We never know. Yeah, I mean, even in this one, too, with Sam Kerr on the bench, Australia up 2-0. 
and it's I mean, that's the biggest thing when I do these broadcasts, and even when I'm just watching as a fan, is I ask myself the question: Is this team good because of the result, or is this team just super bad? And sometimes you look at like Australia beating Ireland by only one. You're thinking maybe I'll, Ireland's not good. I mean, Australia with without Sam Kerr, but I think it has to do something with confidence. The way this team has come out, especially without holding that much possession, I mean, they've been second best in that category. The way they've been able to get that category is quite superb. Long throw into the box that's headed down Sinclair and Fleming trying to track back. Back with Fowler, which will have to dance back. Out with Catley, oh, and cut out by Riviera. Throwing with Ireland, Nigeria, who will be in Ireland's defensive third. And the Canadians. Look to break for a moment. Fleming out with Leon. Leon on the right with Sinclair in some space. Not the best touch as it's cut back and easily collected by Rasso. So now Ireland with a chance. Nigeria. Asisato Shola had a great chance in about the 27th minute or so, but... The chance in the clear was fired wide, and that leaves you with a 0-0 scoreline. Otherwise, the Super Falcons could be on top. Ashley Lawrence will take the throw in for Canada. 43rd minute, about one minute in Melbourne, two minutes left before first half stoppage time. Then that kind of day. Buchanan, Quinn, played out, back with Lawrence. Canada, two goals down, fighting for their Women's World Cup lives. It's Lawrence trying to slalom Carpenter, just has to leave it off. Crossed in, caught there by Arnold. Corner kick coming up for Nigeria, by the way, in the 44th. Taking it from the corner, I believe, might be pain. Indeed it is. Left-handed side, punched away there by Brosnan. Nonetheless, another pip, another header. Moonball keeps on playing. Now with Kanu, back out with Payne. Payne now on the left-hand side. Payne cutting inside. Deflected, shot blocked away. Payne with another cross in. Caught there this time by Brosnan. A little shove there by Kanu. Nonetheless, Ireland's able to keep this a nil-nil scoreline for now. The two goals in this one coming at Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. Australia with their backs against the wall with two goals, courtesy of Haley Rasso, the Real Madrid lady. 45 through, by the way, in that match. Leon lost the ball again. It was a good track back by Catley as she sends it forward. Buchanan on the Riviere. Seven minutes of stoppage time, by the way, between Canada and Australia. About a minute through on that. We approach 45 in Ireland, Nigeria. Let's see what the fourth official gives there. Meanwhile, Lawrence now trying to cross into the box. That's headed away by Carpenter. Carpenter again, trying to run up pitch. Trying to get through. She's been very mobile there. And it looks like we're at halftime in Ireland, Nigeria. No stoppage time given. 0-0 zero, zero between Ireland and the Super Falcons. Ireland has been eliminated, but Nigeria... Started the day off in the driver's seat. Now they've lost that spot to Australia. They can get it back with a goal in the second half and finishing it off with a win. While we have the time, I'd like to reiterate again the fact that if the runner-up from, or rather, if Nigeria keeps it up, they get the runner-up from Group B spot, which is still pretty good, but you end up having to face England in a knockout. England, the same team that won the Women's Euro. Keep that in mind when you try to make your decisions. However, on the other side, if you win this group, you end up facing either Denmark or China. 
which and again for Australia would probably I mean dodge a bullet in that regards in, in terms of just setting up your defense like that title defense showing your defense in, in the middle right I mean this is a team that had high expectations of course we're in the top 10 last last edition had a group that included Italy and Brazil meanwhile long ball is sent trying to find Ford who's now at the edge of the box great ball sent in by the way now Ford on Rivier, left off. Catley with the cross in, deflected out. Back with Grosso, who just clears it right towards midfield. Nobody back in particular as the ball keeps on rolling. There are three Canadians with a press. And it's just able to recollect there. Good work there. Couldn't tell who it was. I think it was um, Claire Hunt, I believe. Center back. So Ireland Nigeria at half. No salvage time given in that match, surprisingly. Pretty clean game overall. Canada Australia got seven. Again, you had two VAR checks. One was to overturn a no goal to a goal. The other was to overturn a goal to a no goal. And also in that regards, Kadisha Buchanan needs some treatment. So seven minutes seems pretty fair. Ireland Nigeria has been a pretty clean game. But it also means they're going to have less of a halftime break. Haitama? Grosso, not a Quinn. Buchanan, back with Quinn. Nifty move for the most part. Buchanan sends in the box. That's headed up by Hunt. Now with Ford again, trying to get it off the turn. That one cut out. Throwing for Australia. Four minutes through, about three minutes left in that stoppage time period. And again, you're taking a look at what was an interesting chance. They're looking at the goal from, couldn't tell who it was actually. It was actually from Fowler. This, the, what was originally was a goal from Fowler, and then Stephanie Frappar from the VAR crew ruled it offside but again thanks for tuning in on this monday morning for me monday night in australia the monday night football has been living up to expectations so group b wraps up tonight it's our group c wrap up earlier today in favor of japan and spain now they have both qualified before match day three but we did see some changes. By the way, Tony Gustafsson of Australia has picked up a yellow card. To my knowledge, that's the first yellow card we've seen today in either match. So now Australia with two in that regards. Not that it would really matter. But so many highlights and joy across. Sam Curzon join it from the bench. Ford to take the throw in. A little too far as it goes back towards Lawrence. And if Canada wants to get it back, they've probably got to rely and probably fill in the world words of my one of my favorite broadcast partners, Gus Koff, where he says if you're if you're up 2-0, it's some, one of the worst leads to have because you feel like you're in the clear, but you're not. Canada needs to come back from being down 2-0 and pretty manageable, according to Gus, in order to keep their hopes alive. Not only, yeah, I mean. At this point, it's not a fact of are you getting the first seed. It's a fact of are you qualifying for the knockouts. It looks like the 2015 hosts and the 2019 round of 16 participants are bound on their way out. Again, the biggest thing with this is how the groups are set up this year, right? I mean, I think about specifically like that Italy, Australia, Brazil group in 2019. All really great teams, all of which are stacked but all three made it because of the 2014 process, right? 24 teams, 16 make it to the knockouts. In other words, all the top two teams in the group make it, and then four out of the six third-place teams. Not true right now, in other words, because it's a 32. 16 still make it. So now only the top two teams will make it to the knockout. So it's not that Canada is waiting to see where their fate will be decided. 6.52 left as... That one is just headed back by Gill towards Sheridan. Seven minutes, and with that, end of the first half at Melbourne Rectangular Stadium, Australia 
up 2 0 on Canada, both goals belonging to Haley Rasso at this point. And Haley Rasso playing right winger on the side. What has right now been a great day for the side. Start off with her goal in the ninth minute and then her second in the 39th minute. First one in the ninth minute was originally overturned for a no call on offside in the process for the goal. And then the second one was straight off a corner kick. Sheridan was unable to punch it away, and Rasso was able to just punch it in the back of the net. So with that, I take a little quick break, and I'll be back for halftime in a few minutes. Stick around, folks. You're watching my live reacts of the 2023 Women's World Cup right here on YouTube.
Welcome back to the second half here of Group B play. We got Canada and Australia still at halftime with the Aussies up 2-0 on the Maple Leafs. And in our other match, we've got Ireland and Nigeria. That game is still scoreless. And that match, both teams are back out on the pitch, ready to start off the second half. Ireland starts off in the center circle with Kyra Carusa, their center. They're still waiting for the whistle. And with that, they're back underway. So many chances in the first half. Asisat Oshawala with a chance to make it 1-0, but it just sailed wide. Also, to my knowledge, I don't think there were any changes at the half, and I think I stand. I think I stand true on that. So, no changes, no changes so far in Australia, Canada. But we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, Nigeria out of the break, out with Rashida Ajbade, rather, on the right for Alozier. Michelle Alozier crossed in the box, headed up and out of play. That took a deflection off an Irish player, so it will be a corner kick for the Nigerians. Corner kick coming up for Nigeria. 47th minute. Swung in and doesn't even get into the area. Not the best corner kick there by Antoinette Payne. Back with players. Pain again. On the left. Out now for Uchema Kanu. Kanu. Slowing move for a while by Christy Uchebe. Lost it there for a while, but given with pain. Out on the left again. Kanu swung into the box and again. Cross that goes into the side netting. This time it was in free play rather than off a set piece. I should also mention, too, if you're just tuning in, there was about a seven-minute difference between Canada and Australia, and you're going to see it in the second half, where uh, Ireland and Nigeria did not have any stoppage time. Canada and Australia had seven. Again, that, that match had two VR checks and also an injury, so that's valid to put it at seven minutes. Ireland-Nigeria, pretty clean game from what I saw. So not much. Jamaka and Andosia to take the goal kick. And while we have just this game up, Ireland, Nigeria, it's interesting to take a note at the captains as you got Andosia in the goal and also the captain of the squad. Only 22 years old, 22, 23, but still doing a great job with the squad. 19 years old, she became the youngest goalkeeper at the Women's World Cup to get a clean sheet. And now 22 years old, she's the captain. On the other side, you've got Ireland. And they're led by 27-year-old Katie McCabe, who was actually given the spot at 21 back in 2017 by former Irish head coach and current South Korean head coach Colin Bell. He's touched there. Oh, what a nifty move. But got past Plumtree, but unable to get past the other one there. I believe that was Lily Ag on the right. Dribbling around, back out on the right. Some space for Alozier to go forward. Alozier trying to play through, and it was not the best there for Ajbade. Australia, Canada trying to get back in this one. Haley Razo right now has made all the difference. And the Canadians can only sit and pout. Two goals, first in the ninth minute and then the 39th minute. As it stands right now, even if Canada gets a, a, a goal back in that regards, Australia is still onto the knockout. And as it stands right now, they're going as the first place team because Nigeria is tied 0 0 with Ireland. 
Ball played forward, and Oshawa gives chase. That's cut out there by Luis Quinn. And Quinn, I believe, might still be down. But she was down for a while. She's able to hobble it off. That's actually a different player, Heather Payne, who is down. You know, let's take a look at the buildup to this. And it was Carusa, and Payne was just cut out there. Not the biggest challenge in the middle, but whatever Kanu did, it, it didn't sit right with her feet. Four minutes plus stoppage time left in that match. Australia and Canada still at the halftime break. No goals between Ireland and Nigeria. Australia up 2-0 on Canada. Back line it goes. Demahin. Osinachi Ohale. Alozier. On the right, getting back into the attacking third, able to still dribble with the ball. Now in the corner, still trackling down. Taken down there. No call made there on number seven, or 17 rather, fairly. Australia and Canada are back out on the pitch. Jesse Fleming in the center circle. To my knowledge, no substitutions there. So both matches are now back underway. 52nd minute at Lang Park in Brisbane. 46th in Melbourne Rectangular. In Melbourne, obviously. Down the line it goes. Chance here for Nigeria. Dribbling. Cross into the box. Header! And it's off the crossbar. Just the... The slightest of deflections there. Courtney Brosnan just able to parry it away. Otherwise, that's a goal. Connor with a great header, too, to possibly steer that in. We have to take a look at that. How about that? And even Connor knows it. That would have made it a 1-0 match. First off, a great dribble of the ball, too. Maybe a chance here for Nigeria. Cut out by Payne. Back up with Alozier. Alozier playing it through. Here's Oshola now. Oshola shot and again steered wide. She had a similar chance in the first. This one was much tighter with coverage. But at the same time, no goal for the Barcelona striker. Adriana Leon on the left-hand side for Canada. They're in the attacking third. They need two goals to keep their campaign alive. Cross to the middle, cleared away. Looks like they made one substitution at half that I was unaware of. So we changed that. But how about that? Chance by Kanu. And again, if it's not for Brosnan getting a touch on that header, it doesn't get steered off the crossbar, and it's 1-0. Meanwhile, Australia now. Fowler's staying with the ball. She takes down Buchanan. And with that, we've got a free kick. So indeed, we did get... Few changes, three, believe it or not, at half. Deanne Rose for Canada, that is. So Deanne Rose is now in for Jordan Heitema. Sophie Schmidt is now in for Julia Grosso. And I believe Christine Sinclair is also off. You have Chloe Lacasse off for Christine Sinclair. That's an interesting choice. Knowing that Sinclair, leader all time in, in goals scored for a women's soccer player in the world, broke Abby Wambach's record about a couple of years ago, one or two years ago, I believe. So Lacasse comes in, and Alyssa Chapman has now come in for Jade Rivier. That might be the one offensive change that we've seen. Rivier off and Chapman in. They need to try to get two here. Meanwhile, it looks like there's. I'll see down on the pitch. Right now, Haley Razo's goal. First in the ninth, then in the 39th, making all the difference as we're now in the 49th. 55th in Ireland, Nigeria. That's collected by Brosnan. A couple of really close chances for the Nigerians, but it still remains 0-0. And thus... You still have Australian first, 
Nigeria would get into the knockout in second. Canada would be out in third. And they would be joining Ireland on the plane back to their respective countries. Kanu was on the right this time. Now with Rusha Littlejohn. So the back line it goes. A little too far of a ball as it's out with Nigeria for the throw in. Carpenter, meanwhile, for a throw in for Australia. That's headed back by Lacasse. Pressure given by Leon. She scored the game winner against Ireland. That one's pipped there by Fleming. Might see Fleming play more of a number nine role in the second half, for all you know. As we got 50 minutes plus stoppage time, or sorry, 40 minutes plus stoppage time. Canada, Australia, 35 in Ireland and Nigeria. I'm trying to find the numbers for Canada and Australia. So Sinclair's there. Lacasse is going to be at 20. Deanne Rose is going to be 6. Sophie Schmidt will be 13. And Alyssa Chapman will be 2. Only substitutions we've seen, of course, Beth Priestman's got one more in the tank if she decides to use it. Tony Gustafsson, on the other hand, has not gone to his bench yet. And I think more importantly, I, and that's the question for Australia this at this point, you're up 2-0. Do you need to bring Sam Kerr into this position? Which I, I think at this point, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's kind of unnecessary. I mean, you're up 2-0. You've got a solid defense. It's done quite a good job against Canada, at least with what we've seen in the first half. I don't think you need to bring Sam Kerr in and try to re-aggravate anything. Now, what I've seen from the media this week is that she is okay and ready to go. Obviously, those things can change. And it might have change in the, in the days leading up to it nonetheless free kick coming left footed into the box by ireland that one's headed up deflected oh it's still bouncing in the area shot well no shot was taken in that regards by louise quinn who was on her knees meanwhile australia is gonna have to recycle they're up there in recovery meanwhile another chance for australia and that one just skips across the box and Haley Razo, who's on a hat trick, almost got a touch to it. Clip four by Canada. Leon gives, gives it right back with Australia. If Haley Razo can get a hat trick, I mean, we've already seen Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. Uh, an amphitheater that holds around 30,000 seats explode whenever she's got the ball in the back of the net. We've seen it twice. She can get it a third time. It'd be absolutely amazing. She's already written herself in the Australian history books. And would they do more? Here's Fowler now on the ball. Meanwhile, for Nigeria, Alozier caught up in the two. That is a double coverage. Ford on the left crossed in. That one headed away by Giel. Back again for Australia. A long shot. Back with Sheridan. She has to punch that over. Such a close chance to make it 3-0. Kyra Cooney crossed from distance. Maybe 35 yards out. And it just had the piece to keep it on target. Wow. Such a little hide. Just would have dipped in at the right moment. And Sheridan using all of her length to get that. So Cooney Cross fresh off that audacious attempt is back in the far side of the pitch corner flag for another set piece. 53rd minute in Melbourne rectangular. Australia still up 2-0. A 3-0 would officially be the daggers. This one's sent into the box. This time headed away. Back on the right-hand side, redirected in. That one's picked off. Back with Nigeria, that one blessing, Demehin, trying to play through uh, with Oshola. Now in the middle. Well, I'm a bit of Ajbade, but that could have been me tripping. Meanwhile, Ohale sent in and easily caught there by Brosnan. Question still remains is can Nigeria get that goal and retake first place in the group? Otherwise, from what it seems like, Australia will be the winners of Group B. 
Rowan coming up behind the way for the Matildas. Ellie Carpenter right back to take it. Long throw coming in, sent into the heart of the box. Headed away there by Gill. And seen out. 60th minute. And just a down. Chance with Ireland, maybe. Katie McCabe going forward on Kanu. Meanwhile, foul in the box with Nigeria, or pardon me, Canada and Australia will be in favor of Canada. Sam Kerr remains on the bench here in the 55th minute. No sign of her warming up. So I might be right about that. It's like, again, you want Kerr to be in this position, but from what it looks like, it, your only objective was to get a win. You can't get first unless Nigeria drops points to Ireland. Right now they are. But if Nigeria gets that win, you end up getting second. Ball pipped forward. Maybe a chance here for Canada to break. Leon able to get a grab on it on the left. That's cut out there. Good recovery, by the way, for Katrina Gori. Sent forward. And again, another pickoff by the Irish. Meanwhile, Leon is down, grabbing her face. Now with Neve Fahey. Fahey? Out those Sullivan. Left off towards Fairley. Fairley clipped out towards the left-hand side. That one's picked off and couldn't be kept in play by Alozier. <coughs> if you're wondering at this rate, if Nigeria loses and, I, and Canada gets one back, there is a possibility that we could see some change. McCabe. Played outside, played in the middle, crossed into the middle. A shot comes in. That's deflected. Still in the area, and Anandosier will collect. Denise O'Sullivan trying to become the engine of this Irish team. As Leon sends it in for Canada. That one's headed up. Still in the area. Back with Deanne Rose. Rose still fighting for the ball. She's got it there, trying to redirect it back. Cleared away by Gorey. Still in the area with Fleming. Now a shot by Schmidt. Curler from outside the box goes over. Fifty seventh minute, Melbourne Rectangular, sixty third at Lang Park. Nigeria still trying to get a deadlock broken. Now, don't give me credit. Don't give me that much credit towards them. Ireland's been doing the same. They just have not had the better chances. Nigeria, though, has played pretty well. Kanu with the header that if it wasn't for Brosnan just bouncing it off the crossbar, would have been in to make it one nil. Canada now on the attack with Lacasse. Couldn't find Leon. That's the one thing. Canada's lacking that final product to get a, a true shot on goal. That's what it seems like at this rate. Again, they've held possession. So if there's any team that can show they can do it, it's Australia. Meanwhile, Ford on the attack. Numbers coming forward. Ford now at the end line. Crossed in. A shot just trickles wide off the post and in. And with that, it's three. Mary Fowler, who was denied a goal off VAR in the first half, trickles it in off the post. 58th minute, and Australia is surely jumping for victory right now. Look at the buildup for this. Ford, by the way, Ford with a great one to run to just open up the space. That itself was just key to fighting. Now, just in the area, crossed in, and again, I was thinking it might go wide. That's my mistake. And again, that might have been a back heel by Fowler. Just trickled in enough that it crossed the entire ball, that is, crossed the goal line. So now it's once again back with Nigeria. So that might be the dagger. Canada might be on the plane home. Now, the only way... They could still be in this as if Nigeria still keeps it up. And I think even for Nigeria, in the sense that even if Ireland were to score a goal, they're under some protection. Because now you can say here, as this happens at around 419 here in Phoenix, 
you can now say that Australia has now got a three plus three goal differential. Nigeria is still five at, at uh, plus one. But more importantly, Canada is down to a minus two. So that leaves some protection both ways now. So now if Canada, if, if in the event that Ireland gets a winner, it is now basically down to Canada to get two goals back to try to keep their play alive. Meanwhile, foul taking Leon, taking down Gory. But 60th minute of play, and simply put, this is not what any of us expected out of this one. For Australia to take absolute advantage of Canada. Again, we expected it to take place in a certain time. Meanwhile, it was a rough boot floor by Brosnan. Again, you look at Ireland-Nigeria, that game unto itself. You look at how what it means for, for both sides, including for Ireland, right? They're, one of their final tune-ups, they were facing France, and they actually got a guard of honor from the 1973 Ireland national team. It was quite an honor. 50 years later, showing the growth of the game, showing how far it's come, and now a team that's at the Women's World Cup Push their take in was uh, number 15 is Ajbade. Ajbade now playing on the left, and Kano might be playing more central from what we've seen. Australia now back in the box with Fowler. Can't play in the middle. Razo was there. If she wants to get a hat trick, she can go ahead. And I, on that note, too, I mean, we did see a 4 0 result earlier today with Japan beating Spain. You were that Japan. And this was a Spain team that at the Euros. People were saying they're not going to be that good because Alexia Puteas is not playing. Now you have Puteas back, and the same remains true. Change coming for Nigeria. Asi South Oshola is going to be off, and checking in will be number six. Let me pull up my notes here. We got that, and then Kanu checking out. So it looks like Onu Monu will be coming in to play that number nine role. She'll be wearing number six, and then Monday we'll check in wearing at number 11. Back with Canada and Australia. Canada needs a miracle right now. I actually do want to credit them that too on the, on the course of miracles, not just because Al Michaels said it in a, an Olympic soccer game back in 1980, but Marissa Lorden of ESPN said this quote, whoever is writing the Matilda's Women's World Cup script is either penning the most miraculous tale or preparing a horror story not even the most pessimistic fans could have conjured up pre-tournaments. Right now, I would say it's more like a fairy tale than a miracle right now. Pitch perfect, absolutely perfect from the Matildas from the start of this match. Not too many shots from Canada, and even any shots they faced, it's been easily dealt with from the back line. And Mackenzie Arnold, their goalkeeper. More importantly, it's been Haley Razo with two first half goals, and now Mary Fowler, who tacked on a third just a few moments ago. As it looks like right now, Australia, the team that Going into this tournament, made the knockouts in the past four consecutive. Might be getting number five in about 28. And oh, by the way, Sam Kerr still on the bench. Meanwhile, chance for Nigeria. Ball played through. That's cut out there by Brosnan. You had Ajbade and Monday there in the area. And Sam Kerr is telling her ladies it's about a mentality. I still go back to that quote, though. If I can bring up that, I, if I can bring up that quote and, and that article, I will. Because like so many things went wrong. I mean, the fact that you know you have Sam Kerr announces before the tournament that she's going to be out for the first two games. Fowler and Luke both get concussions on the same day, and you have your head coach laughing about their training facility their facility and how they've been doing. 
at the same time, he also said that if they do not qualify, it's a failure. And on the cusp of failure, they have succeeded in all the right ways. Meanwhile, back with Nigeria and Ireland, we're going to see a change as Veens comes in for Canada. Meanwhile, into the middle with Payne. Rough touch there, and Brosnan just has to clear it out. Not the best from Neve Faye, who was just trying to, to keep it in. Trying to do a little too much with it instead of clearing it first time. Try taking a touch. Let's take a look at this. Again, it was a good ball played in, and again, credit to a lot of the players in the middle, including Antoinette Payne. Now, Lozier. I might have been fouled in the process, like from Rusha Little John. And I think looks like it'll be a corner. It looked like someone was walking back. Meanwhile, Heli Razo is down for Australia, the 65th minute over there. 71st at Lang Park. Payne to take the corner kick from the right hand side. Easy tap in. Left into the box. Brought down. Still bouncing around and now cleared away. Brought down is Lozier. Lozier's shot is blocked. And again, chances continue. Chebe was the one laid it off, and she had some good chances to possibly provide an attacking standpoint. All sent in, cleared away by Quinn. Lily Ag out there on the wing, and back to the center backs it goes. Fahey, Quinn, and Connolly. Australia, oh, can they be gone on the counterattack again? I think they are. Yeah, there's another chance. Fowler now on the left. Canada with numbers back, though. Fowler still dancing around. Fowler shot blocked up in the air. Gory, I'll battle for the ball. Canada now. They're going to have to remain hungry here and pull off an absolute miracle. Right now, they're the ones living in the horror story right now. Ball played through. Maybe a chance here. Veens laid off. Now with Rose in the area. Rose with a shot deflected and saved there in a crucial moment. First real chance Mackenzie Arnold's been tested, and she comes to the rescue here in the 67th. Lacasse with the throw in. Chapman back with Lacasse on the left hand side. Cass crossed in low, and that's again cleared away. Australia's defense. The Matildas work with beauty on the offense, work with strength on the defense. Sheridan sends it back into the offensive half, headed back, and that was scarily close to an own goal. Not the best header back by, I believe, who it was, but nonetheless, Sheridan from about midfield, and Claire Hunt with an inadvertent back pass. It, it was with the head, so even if it was Arnold grabbing it. it. It wouldn't have been not a foul. But more importantly, it's out for a corner kick for Canada. So now the question is, who gets first, Nigeria or Australia? That's basically what it's decided right now. Lozier into the box, chested down. Meanwhile, Fleming's initial corner kick was cleared away, and then now a foul called. Shot goes wide in Ireland, Nigeria. And the chances keep on coming. I believe that might have been was number 18, Ayinde. Randy Waldrum's crew again got wins in the or rather got a draw against Canada 0 0. And you can you can credit Chiamaka and for the credit there as she was making a save on Christine Sinclair, who's been subbed off for Canada. Then got a 3 2 victory over Australia, Osimat or Asisat Oshuala with the goal. They made it 3-1. Australia got one back late in stoppage time, but it wasn't enough to get a result. Yellow card, by the way, in Australia, Canada. A little argue there. Emily Van Eggmans called for it. But Haley Razo making all the difference. Mary Fowler with a sweet cherry on top. Senton again headed away there and cleared forward. Chance for Ireland. Calling for a deflection there, I believe, is O'Sullivan. And she's going to get a corner kick. 
So if you want to add a little friendly fuel, and again, this is what I was saying about how Australia's third goal makes a big difference for Canada because right now they're at a negative two goal differential while Nigeria is at a plus one. So in the event that Ireland gets a winner, there's still a good difference between them. Whereas before it was the sense that Canada would get more goals in the middle and I think to add extra dealings to the to the work, they also have a better disciplinary score than Nigeria. Now, in the sense Nigeria needs to score two goals, plus Ireland needs to win for them to have any chance of them going to the knockouts and would essentially push push them out. Nigeria, in that regards, would be out. Australia has essentially got their way. As long as they keep the, the lead here, They've got a victory, and they're heading on to the knockouts. They'll be facing either Denmark or China, most likely. It could be England, but Denmark or China in the round of 16. McCabe, the cross into the box, and this time goes into the top netting. Anandosia was watching it for there. And again, McCabe, who got an Olympico from that spot against Canada, couldn't steer it in the back of the net there. 15 minutes plus stoppage time left in Ireland, Nigeria, by the way. One minutes plus stoppage time, by the way, in, in Canada, Australia. Australia has essentially done their business. Now, Canada, the easiest way, as I said before, they need two goals plus a little help from Ireland to beat Nigeria. In of which O'Sullivan was in some space. A little fancy work there. Ag could not get it. To my knowledge, I don't think we've seen any substitutions in this match. I, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Didn't see much. Picked off there. Ajbade. Lost the ball from O'Sullivan. Thrown for the Irish. A lot of Irish fans in the stands at Lang Park. Credit to them. Meanwhile, maybe a chance for Australia to break. Ford, the one giving chase. Keeps it in the corner. Buchanan right in her grill. Trying to stop it. Ball cycled around at Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. Losing the ball there, giving it right back. <laughs> this is how funny how it works, too. We had a scoreless draw in our simul yesterday with uh, Switzerland, New Zealand, and Norway Philippines, on the other hand, was deciding the scoreline up 6-0. Nigeria. Long ball sent forward towards Monday. Monday against McCabe. M against M. 11 against 11, too, when it comes to their jersey numbers. Alozier. Getting past the defense. Trying to get it towards Monday on the right. And the, the question remains for Wendy, Randy Waldrum's crew is, how much do they want three points? How much are they satisfied with one? Because you think about it, like, in terms of putting Australia, the co-host against a team like England, that's going to be a barn burner of a matchup. That's going to be a round of 16 game that's, I think, in the top three at the very least in terms of matchups. Don't get me wrong. I think Switzerland, Spain might be interesting, Japan, Norway. But either way, I think both Group C teams, I think, are better than Group A, in my opinion. That's me. Picked up and rather intercepted and put there by Nifei. Again, as I've reiterated throughout the night, Ireland, if they can get a point out of this, would be quite an establishment for their squad. One back by Onumonu, but she fouled one of the Irish. I believe might have been Ag in the process. Swung into the box there by Canada. And Fowler, plays it with Forge. They're able to track it there, off, it's getting off her back. Now with Steph Catley. Fowler again. Going for the long ball. And it's a little too long there. I believe that was for running Gory, who's started to play higher in the center midfield. Yeah, she's got Razo there in the middle. If Razo wants to get the hat trick. Nonetheless, Canada with another long ball forward, trying to find Lacasse on the left. And indeed, they'll do it in the 74th here. Trying to cut inside Lacasse. And in the middle, Quinn with some touches. 
Back out with LaCasse on the left. Dribbled in low, and that's picked off there by Gorey. Now what do they do? Tries to spread it out towards Ford on the left-hand side. Foot race between Ford and Lawrence, and Ford will be the one to win that. Let's go back to Ireland, Nigeria. 80th minute of play there. Nonetheless, a shot comes in. That one cleared out by Gil. And a shot, long shot, that is, from Nigeria. That one sails well wide. 74th between Canada and Australia. 80th between Ireland and Nigeria. 10 minutes plus stoppage time left in that one. And that's the, the biggest one of the night right now. Again, Australia had probably the biggest storyline of this Women's World Cup and the biggest one in Group B. But the question becomes, can Nigeria win the group or does Australia win it? As I mentioned before, it's the difference between playing 2022 Women's Euro Champions England or playing Denmark or China. Again, still solid teams, both of which are in at the top 15, but they're not England. And it looks like we'll have the curtain call that Haley Razo deserves at the end of the day. She's got the winner. She got the insurance as of right now as Vine checks in on the right-hand side. What a day for Haley Razo. In her 13th and 14th goals for her country. Meanwhile, Alozier sends us in to the box and skips past everybody. Faye gets it on the back post. Carpenter dribbled out, Rowan, but how about those smiles? Haley Razo with Captain Sam Kerr on the bench was undecided whether or not she would start. She was left on the bench. The Australians. Show up when it matters most, including Haley Rouse, the Real Madrid player. Nonetheless, ball sent in. Falls for Schmidt in the area, and she skies it. About eight yards out, and Canada again with the missed opportunity. 76 men. That would have been something had that gone in. Scooped up. Back in Ireland, Nigeria, that is. O'Sullivan. Back again. Meanwhile, Fleming on the right-hand side. This one whipped high into the box here. Header up. That's cleared away. Shot was taken. Anandosier with the save. And now it looks like Anandosier might be down, and she is. Meanwhile, we've got an Australian down. That being Hunt. But it has been quite a hectic day. Again, not too many goals from what we saw yesterday. We saw six between Norway, Philippines, and Switzerland, New Zealand. Now, granted, it was six scored by Norway and zero by Philippines, zero by Switzerland, zero by New Zealand. Today, we got three goals by Australia and zero by Canada, Ireland, and Nigeria. But the darlings of this 2023 World Cup, the team that was in the top 10 in 2019, back in the top 15 now. I believe she, they're now listed at 13 overall. Showing their squad. Now, Ag and Payne are off for Ireland, by the way. <clears throat> Ag and Payne are off. Larkin and Shiva are on. So, the first time, to my knowledge, we see Ireland's bench today. Got Larkin in 19, Shiva in 20. Stats today, by the way, 57% favor of Ireland possession, 43 for Nigeria. Five shots, one on target for the Irish, 10, one on target for the Nigerians. Speaking of the Nigerians, they'll be making their third change. Blessing Damaheen will be off. This is an interesting change. This is a center back coming off. And in that place will be Abi Onome AB. When you look at the history of Nigerian football, when you look at just how they played overall, A.B. making her third Women's World Cup appearance, you know I think Randy Waldron wanted to give her some minutes, especially for the work she's put in. Over 100 caps. It's the most amount of caps in history. Oh, my A.B. Coming in wearing number five. Oh, we're at it. I mean, 
get an update with um with the first name last name Ikaroma Onomoto Gift Monday might be the best name I've heard at this tournament. Gift Monday is now in for Nigeria. Meanwhile, goal kick in Australia and Canada. Mackenzie Arnold descended forward and again. They, I got to give credit to Australia. They're looking for number four. Out on the wing. Second down. It should be a foul. If it is a foul. Fowler. A lot of rhyming. A lot of rhyming schemes. Nonetheless, in the chance, Gory across the box. Back with Fowler again. Fowler in the box. A shot off the post. Oh, boy. She's looking for a brace. Trying to put an exclamation point to this one. And Ireland, too. We've got a couple there. Abby Larkin and Marissa Shiva. One of your ones checking in. Then for Canada, we've got Vines, who did not appear in Nigeria versus Canada, which was the First Canadian match I called, this being what should be the last. Could be called Nigeria's knockout. Let's see. Who knows? Long ball sent forward. A little too high there for Ajbade. Looks like Ajbade is now on the left. Monday will be on the right. So Canada brings in Evelyn Vines. And with that, they are done with substitutions. Eighty seventh minute in Lang Park, eighty first at Melbourne Rectangular. Canada basically needs a prayer at this point. Either three goals to equalize or two and a hope that Ireland can get a goal to knock out Nigeria. Nigeria basically can hold on with a draw and they'll be okay. But with a win, they would be taking the group and more importantly, would avoid facing England. McCabe, Fairly, Little John, now with Quinn, and on the right, some space, is O'Sullivan. Dribble forward, dribbled out a little too far for a running McCabe. So 88th minute, chances trickling down. You can probably tell, I mean, the fact that you have a six-minute difference between Ireland, Nigeria, and Canada, Australia, you can figure, I mean, Australia knows it by now, but the fact that you have some inkling there, obviously, if Nigeria does draw, you can post it up there and know that Australia does not have a test of their lifetime in the knockouts. Now, granted, it's still going to be tough, but it's going to be much easier than before. I think the more important part is, and again, that might be the, a double-edged sword, if you will, is with Sam Kerr not playing. Meanwhile, Lacasse, 25 yards out. Carpenter with a clear forward. Meanwhile, Ireland now in the attacking third. Chance here. Faye now on the right. Cross deflected away. Back with Shiva. Australia now. Back in their attacking third, at a much slower pace. They don't need to get a fourth, but it would be nice. Fourth cutting inside Buchanan. Attempted to clear. That was blocked. Back with Buchanan. And she'll play it off towards Sheridan, who will send it out. Again, chances keep on coming for Ireland. Chances keep on coming for Nigeria. So this is a pretty open game in that regards. By the way, change is going to be coming for... Australia checking in will be number four, Shalina Zadorsky. So I believe it might, or pardon me, sorry, Shalina Zadorsky is with Canada. Number four for Australia, Claire Pokinghorn. That would be big, knowing that Pokinghorn has the record for most caps in Matilda history. Clean sheet would be pretty big for Mackenzie Arnold as well. Would be, I believe, her 19th clean sheet overall. So now we're going to see Pokinghorn come in. And so sending off there. 
applause for Emily Van Eggman. Started striker against Nigeria. Decided to play left mid and now a defensive substitution. And a chance to give Poking Horn some minutes. As this one is pretty much all said and done from Melbourne Rectangular. Again, as I mentioned before, you got about six minutes plus stoppage time. And Canada needs three goals. For now. For now. Or you could have Ireland getting a goal and you getting two goals. Either way, seems pretty impossible. Seven minutes of stoppage time, by the way, in Brisbane. A little collision there. Monday taken down. Play continues. Canada, by the way, still in, the, in Australia's half. Ball clipped in. Back with Lacasse. She's at the edge of the box, now cutting inside. Lacasse's shot is blocked away. Pokenhorn and crew still in the area. And it's going to be a foul. Some of the Canadians were calling for a handball. They weren't going to get it. Meanwhile, Ireland again. Shiva on the right. Faye. And get back with Shiva. That one's cut away. McCabe now playing center. A little John. Pace has slowed down. And by the way, now that stoppage time has been up from 7 minutes to 11 minutes at Brisbane. So still a lot of chances for either side. That is Ireland. I mean, what a moment it would be if they can steal three points from Nigeria. Canada again. Fleming out towards Buchanan. Buchanan. Cross in, that's headed up, headed back there by Pokinghorn and officially cleared. Only as far as Lawrence now, 30 yards out, back in, headed up, and it will be saved there. That was worth the effort there from number 14 for Canada, Vanessa Gill, who's basically playing higher up. Right now, Tony Gustafson's squad has all momentum, all favor in favor of them. Five minutes. Meanwhile, collision there. With O'Sullivan taken down. Or might pardon me, might have not been O'Sullivan. Might have been might have been Larkin. Nonetheless, nine minutes to go in stoppage time. That ball a little too high in the box out for Nigeria throwing, but in their defensive third. As I said before, Australia has basically won the match there onto the knockout. Now chance again. That one's cleared. Canada keeps on attacking. They want to at the very least. Erase Arnold's clean sheet. And Sam Kerr's on the bench. And a captain, again, in what was a pretty dismal camp. Again, you talk about Kerr ob obtaining that calf injury. And then you have Puke and Fowler both getting concussions, separate concussions in that regard, on the same day. Able to come back, but still, you still got a uke out. But you have Fowler back in. She's got the insurance. 3-0. By the way, Buchanan might have lost the ball. You got a player taken down. That might have actually been Cooney Cross going forward. How this place would erupt if Australia can hold on. Again, we'll see how much stoppage time is left. Three minutes before we get that official ruling. Meanwhile, Ireland-Nigeria has about four minutes. So they were originally calling it seven minutes of stoppage time. Then they called it 11 minutes. And now they're calling it seven minutes. Either way... Uh, I don't know if there's any 7-11s in Nigeria, but I know they want to officially play in that category. That's just me. Now back with Lawrence. And it looks like we'll see a change for Ireland. Coming in will be number seven, Callowell. Sorry, Caldwell, not Callowell. Diane Caldwell. Monday, lost the ball, and that's a scrap on the ground. Back with Ireland for a free kick. About three minutes of stoppage time left in that one. About two minutes of regular time left in Canada and Australia. Down there by Gio. Long shot taken, and it's just wide. What a chance that would have been on Arlen Arnold again. Coming up clutch, Veen's was the one to laser it. 
again, I give credit. Canada's got probably some audacious chances. We have Ireland's Faye coming off and Caldwell, Diane Caldwell coming on for the Irish. Trying to see this one out. Would be pretty big for them to get their first result at a Women's World Cup. Nonetheless, that one swung in Sophia Schmidt. And Schmidt's one of the few making her 224th cap. 224th cap for the country. Again, that's second behind Christine Sinclair, who's in the 300s. And most players would be lucky if they ever get to 300. But you can tell that, like, with Sinclair, with Schmidt, so many Women's World Cups, it's going to end out in disappointment in the hands of the host. So many chances. So a team with so much experience as well. Not to add it. Not to mention, you got 10 players in that squad that have at least 90 caps, which is, is quite impressive. To so look at a team like Philippines, by the way, the highest amount of caps that their most experienced player has is 75. So you can see the difference between some of the teams in this tournament. Of course, 32 makes it bigger. How about the shot by Veens? And Arnold just gets a left palm on it. Might be a Golden Glove type save right there. They're approaching 90, Melbourne Rectangular. And that stadium is buzzing as Cooney Cross goes back to the corner to take. Here's Gift Monday going up. Monday, able to get past about a minute left in this one. Monday, still dribbling around, still trampling. She goes down, no foul. Ajbade, Ajbade with a shot from distance, and that's saved. Meanwhile, Australia, they're past 90, and they're maybe trying to get four. I've been trying for a while. Poking horns pass, deflected off of Guy or Veens, rather. But how about the chance there by Ajbaje? Ajbaje, just not enough power on the ball, in my opinion. But again, if you're Randy Waldrum, you have to be pleased with the results here. And again, this is a Nigeria team that... Going into today, made the round of 16 in 2019 as a third seed. And they made the quarterfinals in 1999. That too, I mean, you look at it, quarterfinals was as a second seed. Round of 16 was as a third seed. So in other words, it would not happen in today's Women's World Cup. Trying to show their power, trying to show their dominance. And that's it from Lang Park in Brisbane. Nigeria are on to the knockout stage. They get the scoreless draw. They get the point they needed against Ireland. Couldn't get the goal in. Again, Asisat Oshola with so many chances. But nonetheless, the job's completed. And the Super Falcon supporters can celebrate. Meanwhile, back with Canada and Australia. And it looks like we might have a penalty on our hands with a minute 30 left. So Stephanie Falpar still making already. This is the third VAR check of this match, by the way. There was a collision there. Jesse Fleming was the one getting it for Canada. And challenging for the ball is Katrina Gori. Close to the edge of the box. So the question is, does is it a foul? It does it happen inside? And it's a penalty for Australia. So after challenging a lot, maybe they can get, I mean, I talked about the cherry on top, but you can add some whipped cream and frosting while you're at it. And Jesse Fleming, and I don't think we'll be charged with the yellow. What? At the same time, what is a dismal performance? But unlike Spain, who also, well, in the event that this is made, but Spain, who lost by a whopping margin to Japan earlier to today, Crazy. It's crazy how this works overall. So one more chance here. Callan Sheridan to see the ball. About five minutes left. She'll stand on her goalkeeper line. And it will be, pardon me, it will not be Gory. It will be Steph Catley, the captain, to take this with her left foot. Again, vice captain, Sam Curry the captain, but she's on the bench, as we've noted many times before. But what a chance this would be for Steph. What a chance this would be for Australia to really put the emphasis on this one. 
Chatley with only four goals in her history of being with the Matildas. Can she get five for her, four for the country? Yes, she can. And there's your exclamation point from Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. Four goals, three points, and Australia, the leaders heading to the knockouts. You know that one moment in The Last Dance where Michael Jordan was talking about a situation and he said, and I took that personally? I think Australia took the result from Nigeria personally and translated it into one of the best performances we've seen this year. Looks like Sheridan said on her line, even if she didn't, that's going to be a goal. And this place at Melbourne Rectangular is absolutely buzzing. And you can only imagine how far Australia could go with this type of crowd. Meanwhile, Canada, long shot deflected. Arnold able to collect their scary bounce there at the end. As that's going all the way back. Looks like Canada might have made another change. Number 23 is now in. So I believe it might be... I'm guessing maybe Michelle Paris, maybe? No, Olivia Smith making only her third cap. One of the very few players in this Women's World Cup that's actually younger than me, born August 5th, 2004. So Olivia Smith now checking in. By the way, Ireland, Nigeria has finished up 0 0. So the Super Falcons are on to the knockouts for the second consecutive World Cup. So now it's down to just a finish from Australia and Canada. Looks like they'll be making one more change as well in this match. So both teams going to their bench late in this one. Number 22 will be coming in. For the Aussie, that being Charlotte Grant, will be her 19th cap. And will be Katrina Gori heading off. She'll get the applause. Well deserved. She was the one that drew the penalty to make it 4-0. And Grant will check in. That is now the third change we've seen from Australia today. All deflected, and here comes Charlotte Grant with her first touch of the day. And back gives it right back towards Canada in that regards. Here's Veens going the other way towards the edge of the box now. About a one on six, and that one is cut back off Grant. Good recovery from her. 90 seconds left. Matilda's till it's gone. That's what one of the signs reads with the till part of Matilda's highlighted in green. And you can tell, it feels different. It just definitely feels different from the New Zealand match yesterday. I think more importantly, the fact that Australia are content. No disrespect to New Zealand, but that one against Norway was an absolute surprise. But you look at a match like this, where Australia needed three points, the darlings of this Women's World Cup, if you will. I mean, I think a lot of people expected this team to go far. And, and I think they definitely can. And again, I'll go back to that one quote from Marissa Lordonic at ESPN. This could be the start of the most miraculous tale, led by Tony Gustafson, the mastermind, and a lot of key pieces. Captain Sam Kerr was on the bench, and that raised a few heads, raised a few eyebrows as well. But in the end, gets them the result they need, and that's what matters. Here's Fleming, Buchanan. Pipped out and headed forward by Lacasse, and Rose unable to save that on the end line. So there's a goal kick. We're approaching eight minutes, and that might lead to one more kick of the ball for Mackenzie Arnold. Arnold sets the ball down for the goal kick. Booted forward. 
I want to head it up. Still in the area. Giel with a sky high ball looking towards LaCasse. She gets it for the meantime. Strangler in the middle. And that's it. The Matildas are waltzing into the knockouts with an absolute thumping of Canada. 4 0 the final score. And the three points were clinched all the way back in the ninth minute with Haley Razo. She got the second in the 39th. Mary Fowler added the third in the 58th. And then a penalty kick from Steph Catley in stoppage time for what was an absolute sumptuous performance from a team that was without Sam Kerr in the entire group stage. What a moment and what a performance from Australia. This is how Group B lines up going into the playoffs. You've got Australia fresh off the win. They will be in first place with six points. Nigeria will be second with five. They got a scoreless draw against Ireland. Canada will be in third with four as they will head back to the true north on a bunch of planes. And Ireland will end out their 2023, their first ever Women's World Cup campaign with a draw. I'll be back tomorrow with Portugal versus the United States. I'll be doing a few updates on Netherlands, Vietnam in the process. I'm Mihirsen Hassan. I'm getting ready to go back to bed. So, so long, have a great day, and stay safe.